I like talking about the near death experience and like you said, like the shamanic journeys and stuff, whether it's through plant medicine or meditation or fasting or otherwise, because it's something we can look at that's objective. You know, people are experiencing it and they're reporting commonalities that you know, there's there's commonalities that go beyond coincidence. And that's what I like about it. So if somebody ingests a particular plant medicine and has a particular experience and their experience matches exactly the same with somebody in different culture, different gender, different age. It doesn't have the same indoctrination that they have. It's just, it's a completely, completely similar experience across those different demographics. That has to say something to people. Yeah. That that kind of evidence yes. cannot be cannot be ignored. You know. So, but I didn't want to. Yes. Ian, I know Ian's got something. Hot. Ian wants to talk. I know. No, you're does. good. So. You guys are getting in conversations. I, I love these topics. Cooking. Man. Cooking. Yeah, right now. Is, Jeez. That's why I like these. You know, you could even look at what the ancients told us about the afterlife, you know, as much as we're to trust whatever information is given to us from history in the past. I mean, this is what they were talking about, what was going on in the afterlife, you know, the uh, the Nordics had a particular conception. There's, there's so many. I mean, you could look at things like the Tibetan Book of the Dead. It's fascinating. It talks about an afterlife that's completely strange. It talks about an afterlife. It's like Ian was saying, dude. The Tibetan Ian, the Tibetan Book of the Dead, dude. When you, it talks about like when you leave here, you have this whole journey. It's like, like you said, Ian. They condition us to think like it's like this either or thing. Like you die, you either go to heaven or hell, and it's over. But in reality, a lot of the ancients were telling us a completely different story. It's very bizarre seeing you leave here. There's, there's all kinds of strange entities that try to trick you and talk to you and coerce you, over over days on end. And into the Tibetan uh, religion, they'll bring a, boot, a priest in or a monk. And for like a certain amount of time, you know, 40, 50 days or whatever it is, they'll, the priest or the monk will come and talk to you over your dead body and they'll whisper in your ear. You know, and they'll have, they'll have these guides and these religious um, spiritual like figures and people that are coming. They try to help the, the, the individual guide their way through the afterlife. It talks about a, a completely, like, almost like a labyrinth, labyrinthian journey through the afterlife. The, the creatures and entities that they describe are very strange. They're very bizarre. You know, they're they're very clown and jester like. A lot of them, and they're tricksters, liars. A lot of them have they have different personalities. And uh, again, I mean, is what are we gonna, you know, as much as we can take it for what it says. I mean, you know, but like my my point is, these cultures wrote this stuff down. We always talk about people like we're all the same, but it's possible that not everybody here in this earth is the same. We all might all be mixed up and stuff, you know. You might have genetics from somewhere else. I think, I think a lot of the fallen, I think a lot of the fallen ones, their genetics is all mixed up in us and stuff. And you can look at Rh negative blood types as an example of that. There's a phenomenon around Rh negative blood types. It means it means they're negative for the rhesus factor. The rhesus factor is a protein that surrounds red blood cells. And there's something about the Rh negative uh, people. You know, they talk about, we said before, talk about star seeds and indigos. And my point is, we might not all be the same. Um, you know, we have to we have to keep that on the table, guys. We look at everything as though we're all the same, and there's we we might not all be the same. In reality, that's probably more realistic than the other way around. We're probably all yeah. different somehow. You know. We might be all mixed up too. It's weird. Genes express themselves in weird ways. You understand? Like, say you're you you know you you have brothers and sisters, and you all have the same mom and dad. Genes can be expressed in different ways. You know, you just see it in all kinds of stuff. You can see it in your eye color and your hair, and you we don't know what kind of uh, genetics or hereditary characteristics that we're inheriting that maybe our siblings and our parents don't even have. You can look at things like recessive genetics, and just look at a Punnett square how it works and how recessive works. It means each of your parents carries that characteristic, that gene, but it's 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 expressed to be a recessive chromosome. So what that means is your parents don't express that, but they carry it. And when they combine it together, it's usually a 25% chance if it's a recessive carry g- a genetic trait that you'll get it. You understand? You can get stuff that your parents don't even have. Um, hey, oh, sorry. Uh, there's a uh, comment no. about type O or carnivore. Uh, what's... The- can any, does anybody understand what that is? What was that? In the comments section. Um, oh, damn, where to go? 
Burgo oh. says, I hardly meet people who know type O or carnivore. Love you more already. Does that have something to do with, I guess I've heard different blood types have different appetites and I'm pretty carnivorous, but I was wondering if that's, that's like, true. They do. If you look at whoever said that's smart, I think that you look right. at Ayurvedic medicine. Okay. There's also something called Ay Ayurvedic medicine. It's kind of, it's a Hindu and stuff. It's Indian. It's, it's just an alternative to, can, you know, traditional Westernized medicine stuff. And it's a, it's called Ayur Ayurvedic. Anybody can look it up and that your blood type plays into it. So, you know, based on say, you'll say what your nutritional plan should be. And based off your blood type, they'll give you a different nutritional plan. Some people, like he was saying, like more meat, right? And some people mm -hmm. like more plant-based. Other people like more things like beans and legumes. Other people would want more things like grasses, which would be the wheat products and stuff like that. And there's, there's a definite tie to um, you, what, what your nutritional – your nutritional plan should be and your blood type. And, and like I said, anybody, because whoever said that's pretty smart. Just look up, it's called sure, Ayurv Ayurvedic medicine. Yeah. Are type O's the uh, meat eaters? I don't know. It wouldn't surprise me. You know, type O is a universal blood type. Type O, type o blood can go, I consider universal donors. So their blood can go into anybody. It wouldn't surprise me if that's meat eaters. Uh, I wouldn't be surprised because it's the most powerful type of, it's the most nutrient dense thing you can eat is meat. You can just live off meat for a long time. You know, it's it's very nutrient dense. It has everything you need. It's got protein and fats. You can make the carbs on your own. You don't really need carbs, honestly. Your body uses ketogenic meta, meta, mm -hmm. metabolic processes to turn fats into carbohydrates for metabolism to make ATP production for energy. Uh, you know, so meat. You could just live off meat and water for a real long time. I wouldn't be surprised, given that O is the universal blood type that that matches up. Yeah, I, I see a lot of people claiming Mandela effects that are just too ridiculous, especially the people that only cover the Bible Mandela effect. They're way over the top with it. Now, anything bad in the Bible is a Mandela effect. You know what I mean? Anything. It's just like, all right, you guys are going too far with it. You know? but. The thing about it is, all you really need is one Mandela effect. You know, if you have three, then it seals it. If you know the three things have changed in this reality, come on. It doesn't matter. It's almost like dude, man, flow state was saying at some point you just go, all right, this is going on. What the fuck? Let's get down to it. You know? Like, yeah. But there's like, you just need a couple anchors. Once you know it, like I know how avocado was H A S F H A A S had two A's. House avocado had two A's. All right. H A A S is a fact in my, in my world, my reality, it was now it's H A S S, you know, I'm a it chef, wasn't. Dude. It was H A A S people. Yeah, dude, that's my biggest so, one, Ian. That's my biggest yeah. one because I know for a fact. I was telling Stavely that when I was on Stavely's, I said, uh, basically, I remember when I was a kid, Ian. I didn't ever have an avocado when I was a kid. I didn't even know what they fucking. Well, I didn't know what guacamole was, but like some point when I was maybe thirteen or fourteen, I don't know. I, I found out that there was a thing called avocados, and I fell in love with them. You know eat guacamole and everything and uh i remember specifically noting in my mind wow what a cool spelling for a word it's so different h-a-a-s two a's <laughs> i'd never seen a word spelled like that h-a-s-s -S would have had no significance for me whatsoever it's just like pass or mass right you know what i'm saying or something like you just put a p an h on it but h-a-a-s it stuck out to me there's something about the structure of it that i said that's different I know it was H I know it was H A S. That's why it's my biggest one, dude. Because I 100% know it. That's why it's my biggest anchor. Oh. I see the Mandela effect as like a personal test of: Are you going to trust yourself, your memories, your life, or are you going to trust what's being told to you by something outside of yourself, whatever that may be? Okay. So the point is, if you have memories of something and you know, it, you know, you know deep down inside more than you know anything that. You have a memory of something and now it's changed and the whole reality is telling you that it was never the thing that you remember. At the same time, all these other people remembering the same thing. Well, you have a choice. Are you going to believe in yourself or are you going to believe in some other entity outside yourself? You know, all of us here who are Mandela effect, you know, I don't want to say affected because everybody's Mandela affected, even the people who don't accept it, but we just accept it. So all the people that accept the Mandela effect, we've made a choice, and we, we've made a choice to believe in ourselves. 
despite what it's going to cost, despite looking silly, despite looking silly to our neighbors and our families and being made fun of at the Thanksgiving table tomorrow and stuff. You know, we've made a choice that we're going to believe in ourselves no matter what. And we're not going to we're not going to just believe what's being told to us by something outside of ourselves. So I look at the Mandela effect as like the ultimate test of are you going to believe in yourself that you're, you know, that you have a free will and you have a mind or are you going to believe what's told to you? You know, even that goes against what your reality is, you know, because in the end, what's what it's really doing is the reality is gaslighting you. That's what gaslighting is. You're telling somebody that the reality is not what it is and you're creating one that's you know, opposed to it. So, um, you know, that, that's kind of what it is for me. It's, it's almost like a test of you can trust yourself or not. You know? Yeah. Are you going to stand by what you know to be true or are you going to let your, your, your ideas and perceptions be dictated or, or shaped by the world consensus around you? Well, yeah. Um, I think it's the biggest thing going on right now. <laughs> I kind of went off again. I'm sorry. <laughs> uh, no, no, no. Then, then what, you, yeah. You're you're right about the sugar. And one of the things that they tell you if you're worried about a parasitic infection is if you suddenly have, if you have not been eating a lot of sugar, but you suddenly have cravings for sugar, it's not, it's not actually mm -hmm. you or your brain. It's the parasites yeah. that are telling your body. Right. And is, isn't, yeah. I know. Who said that? Because I can't see on my little tiny phone. That's Brecken. Cool. Yeah, totally. And and also, I mean, it depends on how you look at it, which way you look at it. Like some people say aliens or, de or demons or whatever. I don't know. I don't, I don't know. I try to keep everything is mind. Like in, if everything is inside, outside and up you My, know, as above, so below, then yeah, this, they would be aliens in our body in the universe right. called our body, you know, and they would be destroying as much as they could. So it's the same principle, which there is probably you go. like, I'm oh, sorry, go ahead. No, you go ahead. I didn't mean to interrupt you. Go ahead. It's, I think it's the same principle, um, which is why the quote unquote fairy tales have lasted so long, because I think yeah. you probably know there's a, a kernel of truth, or at least we just don't know how to interpret the fairy tale for what it is. It might be a prophecy or something. Yeah, so, totally, totally agree with that. Yeah. So to, there's there's an interpretation that you can look at when you look at the figure presented as Jesus, um, when we hear of the casting out of the demons, that he was actually using some type of uh, ancient health practice that involved fasting. They say he fasted in the desert for 40 days to achieve his Christhood. Jesus was very closely associated with John the Baptist, who was said to be a member of the Essene Jewish monastic group who were known to practice uh, certain types of herbal and traditional health practices that involved fasting. Um, it's quite possible that the conception of the casting out of the demons was the casting out of the parasites. Mm -hmm. If you look at the, um, the Dead Sea Scrolls and some of the things found in there, if we're to trust them, they go a little bit more into some detail about that. But the figure, uh, John the Baptist, is actually more, he's more historical than, the figure Jesus, um, and he was known to uh, apparently to be part of this this group who practiced these these medicinal these health practices. So, you know, this concept mm -hmm. of casting out of demons may be something completely different than mm -hmm. what's what's told to us. You know, who knows? But it's just another way to look at it. If they were, you know, if somebody was sick and they had a practitioner come along and applied some type of ancient homeopathic mm -hmm. treatment and rid them of their parasites, you might see a miracle, you know, uh, what would be interpreted as some kind of miracle. Mm -hmm. now, I'm not taking anything away from the Christ figure. It's quite possible he did use some kind of laying on of the hands and had a different kind of practices, but I don't think we can rule out some of these more traditional practices that they might have been doing. Like I said, it said he fasted for 40 days. Imagine, I think, I think, I think the fasting that Jesus did in the desert was an Essene practice that all the Essenes would have to do, including John the Baptist. I think it was an initiation practice. They'd, they'd have to go in a desert for 40 days. And sit. now you you don't have to, you, you could last 40 days. You know, you don't have, it's hard, but you can go 40 days without eating, you know, but the problem is you're, you're in tough problems because you, your hunger goes away after the third day, but 
what happens is after you hit day 40 or day 50, at some point you're going to get an intense hunger. Once that intense hunger comes, if you don't eat, you're dead. So if anybody wants to know about fasting, that's a key. You can go long, but once you get hungry, you best eat. All right? So I think about what they were doing. They were going out in the desert, fasting for 40 days by themselves, you know. I fasted for a week one time. I could barely walk up the flight of stairs. Imagine sitting in the desert for 40 days and not eating. It also says Jesus was tended to by angels in the desert. It didn't say he got up and walked out. It said after his 40 days of fasting in the desert, he was tended to by angels. Somebody came and helped him. Typically, karma involves, you know, people talk more like... Um, there's a term called like instant karma. Like, you know, you do something, it comes back to you. But if you really examine the term karma, when you look at all the, uh, the Asian, let's say, let's just call it the Asian cultures um, and the Hindu cultures and stuff, and then later Buddhist and stuff like that. But it basically carries, you're supposed to, karma is, you carry, you carry it with you through your lives and stuff. Like, that's the, that's the thing that makes karma different than like natural laws to, the concept that your karma follows you, you know, over many, many lifetimes. You know, I, I always thought of karma as like uh, whatever goes up must come down, or what goes around comes around. You know, that's what I think karma is. You know, if you want to put a term to it, it's like the uh, the, the the every action has its equal and that, uh, opposite reaction. Yeah, so I told that, you guys why. Can yeah, so sorry, that, sorry, sorry. sorry. That's okay, but that's what I thought about it. Yeah. That's how I, w I see karma. I uh, talked about this before in here about um, there's a commonality with the near-death experience, right? And you, it's very, f Ian, I'm so fascinated with the fucking near-death experience, dude. It's insane phenomena, man. Because there's commonalities that go across everything, genders, cultures, ages, people all throughout time and stuff i wrote about it and it seems to be a common experience where once you're like you know you die quote unquote or you're in that realm you're presented with a life review but the kicker is this blows my mind is apparently you review your life from three different perspectives your own all the other people around you and in third objective perspective which i just call god so here's my point you have to relive your whole life again not just through your own eyes but through everybody else's eyes that you encountered, plus God's eyes. So let's say you were a bully in school and you beat up a kid. You're experiencing it through your eyes, but you're experiencing it through that kid's eyes. You're feeling all the pain that you inflicted on that person. Yeah. Yeah. If, you, if you were a child abuser, you inflicted all that pain and hurt that you did on that kid and all the residual effects it had in their whole life. Okay, You actually experience viscerally all the pain and harm that you that you gave and the flip side you experience all the happy and joyness and love that you gave too while at the same time from that third perspective is a completely objective perspective it's not you or the other person that said it's, it's called god's perspective and i think what, what karma is is that experience because everything you did you literally have to experience literally and then the kicker is i think when you're done and we said this before ian i think you judge yourself and you decide where the fuck you're going to go I thought the scene in the third of the new ones uh, where Yoda fights the Emperor. Remember that one in uh, Revenge of yeah, the Sith? Yeah, yeah, I saw that. Those three, um, those three George Lucas Star Wars that he made in, in whenever he made those, you know, with the Anakin and all that stuff and Queen Amidala. In retrospect, they weren't too bad looking back on them. What do you think of OTW? I think uh, the last three movies were horrible. The last three of the trash, six, of The six together, when you look at them all one, you know, like one after the other, in spite of the fact that there's like, um, you know, like uh, the CGI is better in the uh, in the first ones and then in the, in the yeah, like doesn't four, match up. Yeah, yeah, that's the only thing that I could complain about. But besides, the, I mean, the storyline is actually not very not bad at all. It's, it's yeah. it, it actually follows the books somewhat. Because I read the books before I I read nine books before I even saw the movie. Oh, you well, did, yeah, yeah. I, after I saw the four, four, five, and six, when I was old enough, I I went and I got all the books. I read all the books. Like uh, there were nine of them at that time. So yeah, that whole story about uh, well, they did you know 
the second three they did, which they call the episodes one, two, and three, the whole, you know, Anakin and stuff, the whole story about how Palpatine, you can really look at that. I think Lucas really wrote a good trilogy with that one because what you find out in the end is the Emperor was playing both sides. He was playing yeah. the Galactic Federation against the Rebels. He was ahead of both of them. Think about that. What do we know about all these world wars and stuff that we experience? It was just a group at the top playing both sides. The goal wasn't who won the war. The goal was the war itself. And, he, and Lucas portrays that perfectly in those first three. Is that Palpatine comes up? He comes up That's with a how war. The Empire uh, rises. Yeah, exactly. He drums up a war and plays both sides, right. and nobody knows he's doing it. But the whole goal was for him to ascend the power as the emperor. What a fucking cool story that is. Ian, there's this, this um, in in the uh, in the Islamic culture, in the Islamic religion, they do uh, a trip to Mecca, and I think when they're there, there's a black cube that they walk around in circles. Does anybody else know what I'm talking about? See if you can find it, yes. Ian. Hey, Zen Wen, do you know? Nice to see you, Zen Wen. Do you know what I'm talking about? The black cube that they walk around yes. in circles. And I just it just slipped my mind because yeah. Oh, um, in Mecca, <laughs> right? I think it's Mecca, in Mecca. Yeah. That's what I was saying. Ian, if you could find it, dude, because it might show a ritual. That was for Zen Win for joining for the first time. Thank you. Yeah, the Mecca Cube. I always pull that mm -hmm. up. It's like this energy generator. So. Yeah. Why are they walking around in circles like that? Like, what's yeah, with dude, the? It's, and it's then if tough. you look in the Old Testament, Ian, they talk about how the Israelites took down the walls of Jericho. They marched around it. They kept marching around it silently. And then when they had to the call, they blew the horn and it took the walls down. Here we go. Yeah. You could just see him walk around swirling. Like. Bro, we got deep into this. On my other uh, Google thing, I have so many files of pictures with this, like looking deep into it. And um, this is like, imagine this. I mean, think about the energy that's collected from this. All these people kind of focusing on the same thing and like giving all their thing and the, you know muslim is no nothing against any muslims out there big shout out to you but you know it's it's this is some serious stuff like basically the main thing is like you live to worship me and that's all religions but especially in muslim faith is like your purpose of life is to bow down and worship me that's it muslim it's means my, submission right either muslim or, or islam i can't remember if it's islam or muslim I think it's Muslim. It means submission. Type of creator. Imagine that. Imagine you have kids, people, and you tell your kids, your purpose of life is to worship me. I mean, would you want your kids to be doing that? You want them to live their own life and, and happiness, right? It's just my opinion. I think it's ridiculous. I, I'm passionate about it. Sorry. But I'll always be. Yeah, I, I've left the world of religion myself as well. It's what and you I make it. Be... You know? Oh, there you go. Right here, dude. Yeah. This thing, dude. What is this? Have you looked into this at all, uh, Z? This, what is it? Um, Black Stone of Mecca? Yeah, this is the actual part that they worship. It's like... Mm. Nah, there's like a long story with it, but dude, it's like this... Um, the crystal? Uh, it's some AI w shit, bro. In my and a one-eye image again, right? Yeah, this well, is the, some AI shit, dude. Crystals... Crystals have been known throughout history to carry information, probably some mm -hmm. kind of consciousness. You can look at, like if you're, like they did Indiana Indiana Jones four and the crystal skull. They kind of went off that, but there's these things of crystal skulls and stuff, and you're supposed to be able to. It probably holds technology and information, like Ian was saying. There's probably yes. some kind of aspect to it, you know. You know what's even crazier? The Jews, the Jews, when they pray, there's like this Hasidic community. They put this little cube thing on their forehead when they pray, and they like strap it to your arm or whatever. It's and funny. Also, if you fold the cross up, you can fold right up into a cube. Yes. Yeah, but the cube yep. represents Saturn. You guys know that, eh? Yep. 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 Even if you look at the um, <laughs> the Jewish flag, which is actually the the sign of Rem Remfram, the 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 star. Remfram. Uh, yeah, it also represents a cube. It's the same thing. That same. The cube representation comes up over and over again uh, with these Jewish and Islamic. I mean, they're all Abrahamic cultures. There's a lot of conception that the 
this is offensive to Muslim people, mm -hmm. but I'm saying anyway that the, that the whole religion of Islam was actually made up by basically the Jesuits, if you want to know the truth, for control. I think they made mm -hmm. all the three religions up, so we worship a certain deity, but it triggers people. But you know, no, I, the, the, I, no, no, but you're right. Yeah, you're absolutely yeah, right. Yeah, uh, but, but the thing is, is that this energy that's being collected is obviously that's their big power and and these are the tools and then they're using this energy i mean that's this thing i expose on the saturn or this or that i mean i don't know it's it's just i i'm just trying to see exactly i want to know like really what's happening here with this whole mecha thing and collecting our energy and and how they you know the science behind it I wanted to get into this fallen thing though. Now that we got some uh, base, right? So we're you know. the fallen ones. So potentially, so, it's just potentially. Well, um, you can. I definitely think you could look at it as that way. You know what I mean? Maybe not out of uh, the Bible or something type of thing, but I would definitely say we fell here in a way. You can look at it that way. Um, I don't know, but I don't want to get into the discussion because you were talking about it. And some people say, you know, it's whatever, but I get more of that vibe here, you know? It's just possible. The other thing yeah. is, that, like I said, we may all be the same, but we're here in our genetics and mix. A lot of, there's a lot of understandings that white skin and blue eyes would be fallen genetics, if you want the truth. And the more closer genetics to this original Adam would be dark skin, dark hair type of thing. Um, that's what i'm saying real quick it's about uncomfortable for people but it's just, it's a topic that should be discussed but that's why i wanted to go to when you said yeah. the some not we're not maybe we're not all the same that's something i always yeah. want to talk about in these panels but we never get anywhere but um is that there, there could be and some of some of them are like this hive mind it's like the same type thing and 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 many people where you know a, a group of people around the world could be in some hive mind system where they're just like some you know what I mean? Some AI system type thing. Not really AI system. I'm trying to describe it the best way for people to resonate with. Yeah. But um, yeah, they're not like individuals. Like, yeah. like we have people that are individual, you know, souls, and some that are kind of like these high mind souls, yeah. consciousness. We might not all be the same. We might all be mixed yeah. up. It's a weird, very weird concept to think about. There's a lot of ancient conceptions that. The genetics of man was mixed and manipulated with. We all know if you look at the Genesis story of the, uh, you know, we talk about all the time, the fallen ones, or the, the sons of God laid with the daughters of man, whatever you want to think that is, and they had offspring called them the Nephilim, Raphaim. There's different names and stuff, but uh, there's a lot of stories that there was some type of her genetic or an otherwise interbreeding with other. Uh, creatures or other entities let's call them you know what we just call human might it's probably way different see they try to teach us that we all evolved and stuff you know we all evolved up through monkeys and then we split off and everything but you know there might be some kind of truth to that i don't really think so though but um so they teach us that that we all came from a single ancestor and stuff but it might be way different than that if indeed there were these let's call them fallen entities in some way, interacting with this world and manipulating the human genome in some way. It's possible. The ancient Sumerians talked about it, you know. Again, it was yeah. represented in the, gen in the Genesis version that was presented to us in the Torah, supposedly attributed to Moses, that, uh, that these fallen ones intermingled with the daughters of man. They found them beautiful and comely, and they intermingled with them. Uh, if you look at ancient, if you look at the story of the Adam and Eve story, there's certain conceptions in the in certain Jewish traditions, and also in some conceptions of Gnostics that the original Eve's original child was not of Adam. Eve's original child may have been a serpent. When they say the serpent came in the garden and Eve bit of the apple, the biting of the apple may be analogous to sexual copulation, and that. And that Cain and Abel were the firstborn of, to Eve. They were twins. They might have been serpent seed because the Bible says that the line of man came from the third child of Eve. His name was Seth, which is weird because everybody talks about Cain and Abel as the sons of Adam and Eve, but they never tell them about Seth. The funny part is we're supposed to come from Seth. 
So there's a conception that when Cain had offspring, it was a serpent seed offspring. We might see them represented in the 13 elite bloodlines that, they're show, that they show to us. I don't know. It makes sense to me if that's true. And that we may be the line of Seth. When I say we, it might not be all of us because it could be intermingling there. I'm just making a point that what we're talking about goes back to the oldest writings we have, to antiquity. That's why I hate when people call it New Age. New Age is the dumbest concept to me because New Age stuff is actually the most ancient stuff that they give us in this whole world. You know, when you look at the most ancient writings that we have, at least if you're to believe any history, they all line up with this quote unquote New Age philosophy. It's, you know, it's not really New Age, it's just stuff that was hidden from us, really. Um, but yeah, Ian, this whole idea that we might not only be the same, our genetics might be mis mixed up. There's some kind of serpent component in it, you know. I don't want to go crazy on all the serpent lizard people and shit, but there seems to be some kind of serpent component that runs through our history and potentially our genetics. You know, when you look at these elite bloodlines, they may have some type of serpent characteristics. I know a lot. Of, there's a lot of tropes made of it and stuff. You look at like the David Icke stuff or the David Icke shit, but or some of the conceptions of the Anunnaki or the Anuna, but there's some kind of serpent representation here, you know. It talks about the Garden of Eden shit and all that stuff, you know. With the this is weird. Well, this is weird shit. Dude. This stuff is weird fucking stuff, bro. Yeah, it's possible that different types of people came here first, and then they, you know, whatever. But then you look at nature. It's like did nature just have red flowers? Like you know what? Let's have yellow and white and purple flowers now, or was it just all of them? You know what I mean? It doesn't matter which which one's the original, which one came first. I don't think so. So I don't know. I'm gonna be honest. Like I get the vibe of this place. I get like okay. So you the creator created, and then you have creators that also create um, other worlds and and things like that and control things. But the ultimate creator already did its thing. It's way beyond that. So it's not controlling everything. I think of this world, there's these separate creators above it that created it kind of like us. Like it's not, it's like it, if we created some metaverse, like what's his name? Or Elon Musk created some uh, digital universe with this whole world. He's the creator. He's the God. He's the ultimate creator. But he didn't yeah. create that world that he originated in. And then so I think that there's also a fractalized type vibe for of creators. I think so, too. You know what I mean? Because people who say the creator, and I always say, well, the creator of this world or the creator of your spirit. Mm. Yeah, they do the same thing, you know, like people say the creator, well, okay, the creator of this world, because there's a lot of conceptions in history that the creator of this world is probably not somebody you want to be worshiping and worshiping. This whole world that we perceive may just be a, a projection of ourselves, and then we somehow perceive it all collectively but it's just all an individual projection of ourself i'm so glad you said that joe because i've been thinking that more and more is it yeah. and it brings new meaning to like you know they talk about stupid stuff like the secret or whatever but it's really just about manifesting right so if we can truly manifest this world it's not such a crazy idea to think that this whole world is just us i said i say this all the time i'll say it again for anybody new is that the words earth and heart are anagrams. Do you understand what that means? It means they're the same letters just mixed up. Think about that. Earth and heart are the same letters just mixed up. Home is where the heart is. Okay. So you're li you likely have a toroidal inertial field that runs right through your heart. Okay. So your body sends off an electromagnetic signal or you have an electromagnetic energy to yourself. Your body likely has a toroidal field just like this earth probably has. So that, with that conception, I mean, look at the chakras. The chakras represent the exact visual light spectrum that we perceive from red to violet. Just same color as the rainbow. You have those in your chakras. The ancients knew it. The Vedics and Hindus knew it, preceded by the Aryans. They knew we had chakras. They, it was no secret, you know. That's my point. Your body's electromagnetic, and so is this world. Joe's right on. This world could literally just be a projection of ourselves. How somehow we, we experience it? Somehow we experience it collectively. How do we control uh, it? I don't know, because they probably we probably could control it more, and they engineered it out of us. So before the fall, whatever you consider the fall of man, maybe we had more control. Maybe we just existed in it. But I don't. I don't know. It's just all theory. But 
It makes sense to me, at least. Yeah, it sounds good to me, too. <laughs> you know, it's it, and th these things can get complicated, and they can, and and speculation is, is, it, we go can ahead, go down ahead. rabbit holes and stuff. I, I do want to just say a friendly reminder that I always tell myself uh, when I try to keep it simple. Uh, just you know, the important thing is three th is three things: be good to other people, be good to yourself, and maintain a communication with the Creator, and everything should be all right. You know, um, I was 17 years old. I was facing life in prison. You know what I'm saying? And um, mm. I didn't know what was going on. I'm still young. You know, um, this is before me even thinking about finding myself, you know, all I knew was that there was a higher power. Right. So I, I wasn't looking at anyone else. I wasn't looking for nothing in no one else, man. Um, I was trying to find myself. And once I did, I understood that all the rest of this shit really is bullshit, man. If you don't know yourself, if you don't know who you are, the rest of this shit is bullshit. I'm sorry. I don't mean to be that blunt, but yes, the fuck I do. This shit is real. If you don't know who the fuck you are, the rest of that shit is bullshit. And you're lost. Because to know who you are is to know all things. All things. And I'll land right there, man. Y'all, no, he's I'm right. He's right. He's right. He's right. You have I always to tell people yourself. this. Okay. I always tell people okay, this. That's all I gotta say. I always tell people this, guys. You can lie to the world. That's one thing. But if you're lying to yourself, that's insanity. Okay. Just don't lie to your. You can lie to the world. You know, sometimes you gotta lie. We're taught that lying's bad. Lying's not always bad, people. Sometimes you gotta lie. It's okay to lie. All right. Give yourself permission. If someone's coming after your family, you gotta lie. You're gonna lie, right? I'm just trying to prove a point, but don't ever lie to yourself. That's the worst sin you can commit is when you're lying to yourself. That's insan it's insanity. And the system is gonna do everything it can to get you to lie to yourself and split off and psychically split and buy into the identity that it's trying to create for you. But don't let it happen. Just don't lie to yourself. You know, try to try to be honest, even with the hard parts, the dirty parts. The parts that you don't want to look at. You know, you don't have to tell people. You don't have to confess it to some priest. You don't have to tell some psychologist. But just be honest with yourself. It's important. Triple R is right. It's all, it's, it's all about yourself. You don't have to worry about nothing else in the world. You don't have to go protest. You don't have to go vote. That ain't going to do shit. You just give them your system. If you go protest and go vote, you're showing them you give a fuck about what they're doing. Exactly. You just give, thank you. Thank you. you. Just give them, Fucking thank yeah, you. You're just giving them their energy. It's, it's all about you. It's really all that matters, dude. Your Yo, votes look, are oh, votes. Bro, B -O -L -T. Bro, bro, just he said everything, y'all. He literally just, bro, just said everything. And, Back in uh, the Spanish flu, uh, Ian, mm -hmm. Spanish flu of uh, 1918. There's a lot of stories that people, what they would do is they would take what's called soda. It was basically bacon soda. Bacon soda is known to alkalize. Okay. I'm not promoting medical advice here, people. I'm yeah, just saying. Not. No, I'm just saying bacon soda is known to be an alkalizer. Okay. Mm -hmm. That's, that's, you can just look at chemistry and see that. So there's different ways to alkalize in your body. You don't have to use bacon soda. I, my, I, I think you need to use green. Green juice to me is the best, whether it's wheatgrass juice or, you know, any kind of um, baby green or micro green, and then you juice it. You don't want to would, blend would it. You have still to be considered you a fast, bro. If you do yeah. like some green juice, that would still be fasting if you blend it. It is because okay. what you can do, Ian, remember we talked before about weaning yourself into it? So uh -huh. you could wean yourself down the juice, and then you could just go just water. I think right. the best way to fast is to go in and out of it, but. Because the juice, just say you did, I'm a big proponent of wheatgrass juice and stuff. It doesn't have to just be wheatgrass, but just called green juice. But you got to you gotta do it right because you just don't want to put it in a blender or something. You got to juice it. There's different, you know, you can use what's called an expeller press. It's a, it's a twin gear press and it, 
it uses twin gears. It goes through two gears and it presses it out. And because your body, you, your digestive system can't break down the cellulose. Okay. So plant cells, when you look at, you know, animal cells versus plant cells, plant cells have something called cellulose around them. Okay. Our body has a tough time breaking down cellulose. That's why you cook vegetables, you know, and they're a little bit easier to digest and eat and stuff. You don't have as much gas and stuff, right? So there's a thing of cellulose. Now, if you're a cow, you could just eat grass because they have multiple stomachs and they have ways to process it through their, diff, to their, uh, through their, through different met metabolic processes and digestive processes. But humans don't have it. So if you want to get the benefits of like wheatgrass and stuff, you got to juice it, you expel it, you drink the juice. Um, and the thing about it, Ian, the thing about it, and here's the bombshell is that, uh, you get all your minerals, you get complete minerals, but they're what's called chelated, okay? It's called chelation. All that means is the minerals are sort of bound to an organic substance, you know, either an enzyme or otherwise. So your body absorbs it in a natural way. That's why when you just take kind of over-the-counter, you know, uh, vitamins that are just hard vitamins that you just buy even the gummies, well, they're non-chelated, you know, and you'll absorb some of them, but a lot of them will just give you the runs and you just expel them, you know, uh, They'll just the, the 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 minerals in there will actually pull the water from your gut. It's a form of osmosis. However, if you're getting those vitamins through this green juice, like I said, they're chelated. The process is called chelation. Anybody could look it up. Your body absorbs those way, 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 way better. So it passes that intestinal barrier much better, and your absorption, your absorption in your bloodstream is much better with chelated vitamins. So. Yeah, he mm -hmm. just put it there. That's it. Chelation. It's spelled with a C H, but it's pronounced key. Um, right. So these uh, green so drinks, and you know, when I say alkalize your body, you're not. It doesn't mean you go alkalize. It means you're using the principle of alkalinity to balance your body to pretty much a pH neutral situation. I think a lot of disease and stuff, and especially these parasites, like Zen Wombs talk about, comes from acidity in the body. Your body gets too acidic. Mm -hmm. Acidity in your body. Acidity. How do I say this? When you look at pH, when you look at the pH scale, pH stands for potential or power of hydrogen. All that means is it's about, uh, it's about hydrogen ions, okay? So if you're too acidic, you're too positively charged. You have too much positive uh, hydrogen ions or your hydrogen ions are too positively charged, you understand? Well, think what I'm saying here. So if you're too acidic, you're too positively charged with hydrogen ions, what I'm trying to say is I think most disease is electromagnetic, not viral. I think a lot of it has to do with your acidity in your body and your, your balance of hydrogen ions. It's, it's, this is all chemistry. It's, this, is, this is basic chemistry. So I think what happens is your body becomes electromagnetic, magnetically imbalanced with hydrogen ions, and therefore your, the, the disease is attracted to you magnetically. It's not viral. But, you know, these are real advanced theories and stuff that, you can get in trouble for even fucking talking about this shit. But I don't care anymore. So they can mm -hmm. fuck themselves.